Welcome to episode four of Good Fab Fridays, your weekly look back at fab magazines from the Renaissance era, April 2002 and beyond. Today we look at issue 191, the pre-pride issue, June 6th to June 19th of 2002. And of course on the cover we see a very good looking guy getting ready for pride. He's probably finished his workout and now he's doing a tan in a stand-up tanning bed. So let's dive in. First page, we have our ad from Dominion, of course. Dominion was a proud sponsor of uh, the queer community and they always advertise in Fab Magazine. On aisle five, you'll find bottled water, wrinkle cream, low fat dressing, leather care, protein powder, tweezers, and condoms. All the things a gay man needs. Next page is our ad for Woody's, of course. It's interesting reading the names of the drag queens that are listed on here. Some of them are with us, some of them are no longer with us. Uh, so we have Georgie Girl, still doing her stuff at Woody's. Uh, Michelle Ross, we recently just lost her. Jackie Baker, we're praying for her safe return to all of us. Uh, Nicolette Brown is there. Chris Edwards, we've also lost Chris Edwards. Christian Jeffries, uh, and Robin Loren. Robin Loren is still around. And for those who do not know, she was one of the best share impersonators out there. Next page, we have an ad for Warehouse, which is a party at uh, the Government Cool House complex. Government Cool House, of course, is now a condo complex. Uh, the two DJs for this party were David Morales and Frankie Knuckles, two of the top DJs in the world, both gay, both played for straight and gay scenes, which was a rarity at that time. And Frankie Knuckles is, of course, and Sally no longer with us. Next page is our contents and our masthead. So let's get started. Uh, issue 191, June 6th to the 19th, 2002. Editor-in-Chief Mitchell Rayfield, Art Director Justin Station, Deputy Editor Stephen Bresne, Associate Editor Andrew Namath, Music Editor Ilya Yanachi, Editorial Assistants Ryan Porter, James Sharani, and Scott Bradley, Contributors Paul Blini, Roland Chambers, me, uh, Todd Klink, James Murray, Alex Rolston, and Susan Walker, Photographers John Cohen, Stefan Gregor, Philip Lechen, John White, and Cassandra Costello. Director of Advertising and Business Development, Antoine L. Hashem, National Account Manager, John White, and of course, this was put out by No Fear Publishing. On this page, you'll see a wonderful picture with Moses Neimer at Miss She Male World Pageant. Moses, by the way, is the founder, the creator of City TV. So shows like Electric Circus, uh, fashion television, fashion music, new music, all that stuff. He was responsible for that. And a little birdie also told me that Moses actually did have a passion for trans women. The cover was shot by Philip Lechton, art direction Jordan Worth, model was Danny Hollywood Crowder of The Lofters. The Lofters was like Big Brother back in the day, and uh, Danny was one of the people that were put into a loft. They filmed them 24-7. I remember actually appearing on one episode. I think I was interviewing Matthew Chantelois at that time. They were talking about bathhouses, and we all had to be in towels for some reason. This is Danny then, and this is Danny now. Danny now lives in Vancouver and apparently he's worth $1.5 million according to a website. So if you're a gold digger out there, get on that. Beware, I believe Danny is straight. I believe he is in a relationship with a woman or he's married and he does have a family. But when has that ever stopped this? Wardrobe, the only thing he's wearing. Danny's sunglasses are by Eyes on Church Optical. Eyes on Church is still there. I switched from the east side to the west side. Hair and makeup, Sunil Prakash of the Lip Lounge and location was Epic Fitness, Epic Fitness, now condos. Letters of Batmagazine.com. Rabbis are Jewish aborted fetuses. Hello, it's from a Jewish hustler. And these were letters about Todd Clink's column was about a Jewish guy who wanted um, escorts to come by and beat up his Jewish grandpa for some reason. Yanachi Funny, Leo Yanachi, our music editor. Trim the Fat, letter about Paul Blini's column. Fetish Drama is a letter I will read. Since last month's article, issue 189, about our new monthly event, Fetish at Five, there has been a tremendous outcry about the banning of fatigues. Northbound Leather and Fetish Night were built on keeping our ears to the street, thus offering that which people are looking for. Fab readers have spoken. Fetish at Five will now accept fatigues, but only as part of a full combat uniform. Just the pants with a tank top won't cut it. The fetish scene involves making an effort into putting a whole look together, like any scene, including Vaseline. Vaseline was the party back then. Creativity does not require a major expense. This reminds me of the current drama that happened just a couple months ago on RuPaul's Drag Race UK version where RuPaul went off on some drag queen who went on stage in an H&M outfit. I do not want to see any more fucking H&M. And it's true though, creativity does not require a lot of money. The money that someone could have spent on an H&M outfit or batiz and, and t-shirt could have been spent making something a little bit more original. If you don't have creativity or a style, find someone who does. I'm for hire. 
Editor's letter from Mitchell Rafel. Pray to flesh is simply good packaging. When I interviewed male nude photographer Zahazani for the National Post a year and a half ago, I said to her that some critics would argue that the chiseled bodies she snapped were part of a commodification which produced inferiority complexes for those who gaze at her stunning works. That's tough luck, she responded, and then went on to say these images were good because men have a lot of shaping up to do. They have been scruffy for generations. If men get some pressure on, even if they don't go all the way for a six pack, at least it forces them to try a little harder, and that alone is very, very positive. As pride approaches, so does the parade of flesh, and more six packs than you'll find at the beer store. Our media is filled with himbos, fab included. We even use hot bods to sell AIDS drugs. Himbos were like bimbos that were male. So his letter is basically talking about how gay men get ready for pride, and most of it is focusing on the body. And he ends with, when it comes to beauty, if you don't like what you see, then turn the corner, change the channel, or flip the page. And if one still wants to complain that they could never get a perfect body, then read the Toronto Star dance critic Susan Walker's brilliant review of Remington's on page 30. Perfect bodies of all shapes, sizes, and races are waiting and willing to indulge your fantasies. It just costs $20 per song. And I think it still does cost $20 per song. Hopefully it's gone up. You know, cost of living should at least be 30 now. Uh, our sushi page and our blurbs from around the world. Uh, my two favorite quotes from this issue's sushi are, I'm not gay, although some viewers seem to think so. I don't have a problem with homosexuality whatsoever, but I'm clearly not gay. If some of you could see the girls I've been with, then you'll all think twice. And that was from Jack Osborne of the Osborne's reality show. Uh, this was a show where uh, Sharon Osborne sort of got her TV start. And uh, as we know, Osborne has been canceled from her uh, talk show, The Talk, because of her views. My next favorite quote is, a lot of my peer group think that I'm an eccentric bisexual, like I may even have an ammonia-filled tentacle somewhere on my body. That's okay. And that's from Robert Downey Jr. talking about his sexuality. With making to DJ training, you are going to get dirty, promises Heidi Eisenhower, one of the organizers of the Summer Solstice Festival OM, a weekend of camping, electronic music, art expositions, and workshops ranging from whip making to DJ training. You're out in the forest and open fields. It's a country. You're going to sit on the ground. In other words, bring last year's body body wear, unless of course you're part of the SM crowd that descends on OM in full leather. To protect their expensive hides, Miss Eisenhower says they bring blankets to sit on and stay squeaky clean. The festival also attracts a mixed bag of ravers, hippies, goths, and even a conservative sporty vibe. Bollywood returns to Mollyland. I'm sure everyone knows what Bollywood is. Mollyland is a little cute little term that Fab created. Around 1800s, Molly was a term or derogatory term for a gay man. And the village at that time, uh, Church and Wellesley area, was owned by Alexander Wood. And Alexander Wood was a suspected homosexual, and he was involved in a scandal at that time. And that scandal was he was charged with finding the person responsible for raping this young woman. The young woman had described um, her attacker's genitals. So Mr. Alexander Wood took it upon himself to ask many young men to drop trial so that he could inspect their penises. And so the area was called Molly Wood's Bush because of Alexander Wood. Shirtless go-go boys with seductive wraps around their waists and girls and saris are going to sashay their way into funk Asia as it returns to the Church and Wellesley scene. Canada's biggest queer South Asian fete hits Fly Entertainment Complex starting June 7th. Fly is known for its Saturday nights of JLo remixes and boys who pump it up all week to show it off all night. But on the first Friday of every month, that will give way to Indo hip hop, Goa trance, and funky bomber doll. Funk Asia began four years ago at the Red Spot on Church Street. The Red Spot is now the drink. Then moved to Best Batique in heteronormative Clubsville and has now outgrown that location as well. We were having lineup issues, explained Sarah Dahani, Funk Asia founder and DJ. So she found a bigger space. Will chin studs be at Pride? A bastion of heterosexuality may get the loudest cheers during this year's Toronto Pride Parade. Contestants in Canada's most publicized male beauty contest, the Ultra Het, Mr. Chin Bikini Pageant, might carry a giant flag belonging to the multicultural Chin radio station at this year's Mega Fag Fest. <laughs> the words were used. The man behind those bikini muscles is power homo Ron Sears. If there are men there, that's where you'll find me. About 15 years ago, after working on the Miss Chin contest, he begged for a men's contest to be added to the Chin Radio Annual Canada Day weekend picnic. His boyfriend, Scott Merritt, Scott Merritt was on the cover of that the last issue. His boyfriend, Scott Merritt, is helping with this year's event. And if the two hunks have their way, the 25 Chin contestants will sport masks in different colors of the rainbow as they march the station's multicultural flag down Young Street. To its credit, Chin flew the rainbow flag over its building last Pride, which Mr. Sears feels is pretty amazing. I just wonder why the contestants would be wearing masks. Wonderland, not part of T.O. 
No, Canada's Wonderland does not count as Toronto. Franco Bonnie tells one of the three young queer people who will be coming to the big city, two of them for the first time from Northern Ontario. They'll be taking part in the Summer Queer Arts Program at Buddies and Bad Times Theatre. Mr. Bonnie is the theatre's director of youth initiatives. He hopes the youth will learn from each other and make contact with activists and mentors, then go back to their own community to share the knowledge they gained in Toronto. Spread the joy, spread the knowledge. Next page, news. Sealtown Pride, a breast fest by Stephen Bresnay. Will this be the year of the bare-breasted lesbian at Hamilton Pride? It probably won't be me because sunburned nipples really suck, says Lila Miklos, chair of Hamilton's sixth annual Pride Festival. While Miss Miklos did admit to going topless at last year's Toronto Pride, she's pretty sure there's never been any breasts or asses bared at Hamilton's marches. Stephen ends with, but because the city doesn't allow motorized vehicles as part of a march as opposed to a parade, organizers will be rolling out wagons. I'd use pussy power to drive the wagon, says Miss Miklos. Ribbons will be awarded for the most inventive use of a wagon. Miss Miklos is crossing her fingers and praying people will get into it. We hope they aren't all apathetic and say, whatever, just be happy we showed up. She'd like to see something that plays with the Steel City's image. Maybe rainbow smoke coming out of smoke pipes and have lots of cats to offset the phallic symbols. Wow, Antonio Sabato Jr. will lift 4.2 pounds. Uber undie model Antonio Sabato Jr. will be one of the main celebs in Toronto for the Much Music Video Awards, which air live on June 16th. Uh, as we know, Antonio Sabato Jr. is now an ultra-conservative asshole. Sabato will not just stand around and look pretty, not that there's anything wrong with that. In fact, the actor model will lift, carry, and present a 4.2 pound MMBA statue. The category is still hush hush. Other notables at the MMBAs include Shakira, uh, Shalom Harlow, Amanda Marshall, Korn, Sum 41, Bow Wow, David Usher, and Sloan. Next page, an ad for the Pride and Remembrance Run. Next page, an ad for Epic Fitness. And for Buddies and Bad Times Theater, their Pride lineup, Tallulah's Sexy Cabaret, Easter, B-Girls, Kill Kill, and ad for Captain Morgan, the official spirit of Pride. Because as you know, Pride's about getting a little drunk at times. Ad for Waterloo, Wellington, Regional Pride. All these lovely little small prides happening all across Ontario, and of course all across Canada, and of course all across the world, because Pride generally happens um, in the summer in most countries and most cities, and usually in June. This ad is probably the, one of the worst looking ads I've ever seen in my life, Sorry, Murray Thunberg of Prover Group put this on, but this ad was a mess. And this party was interesting. I remember going to it, it was at a theater, but as you know, theaters have all these levels. So there was a main dance floor, uh, but, there's, but there's all these levels as well. And I just don't do levels. I do, I do floors, but partying on levels kind of takes me out of the moment a little bit. And our feature for this issue, How Much is the Perfect Body by Ryan Porter. As Canada's largest Pride celebrations approach, the demand for perfectly toned torsos skyrockets in Toronto. Men prepare for months, even years, to achieve the highly coveted bodies of magazine models, which Derek Noble, host of Pride Vision's Urban Fitness, describes as lean and ripped. At Ford Models, the ideal male model fits the description with a narrow 31 to 32 inch waist and 42 inch chest. While genetics determine in large part a man's ability to obtain the ideal form, Noble says that after a year of hard work, the results should be pleasing. But over that year, the quest for perfection will incur some staggering costs. When it comes to sculpting a perfect body, Noble says, it's like any other part-time job. You're going to be spending more time with your trainer than with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Noble's fitness program involves seven and a half hours a week of training. And according to Statistics Canada at that time, the average Canadian earns $135 for 7.5 hours of work, making the annual value of one's work at time over $7,000. Then there's your gym membership costs, which was $65 a month. Average routine values total fitness, no longer no longer in operation. The YMCA, Epic Fitness, gone. Um, and good life. Over a year, the cost of a gym membership will total about $780. Next, you have to factor in your diet. You've got to buy special food and supplements. Ryan continues with, based on prices at Muscle Mag International, a year's grocery bill for supplements will average about $3,200. Time, gym membership, and supplements for a basic perfect body total about $11,000. There are many extras if one wants the deluxe or ultimate version of the perfect body. And for some, there may also be a psychological cost, which is difficult to calculate in monetary terms. Brian Pronger, a physical education professor at the University of Toronto and author of the upcoming book, Body Fascism, Salvation in the Technology of Physical Fitness, says the obsession for the perfect body signals a feeling of inadequacy. Instead of seeing just a gorgeous body, I see someone who's deeply insecure because they're spending that much effort and time in order to make up for something they think is lacking. This is all about selling one's body in a marketplace. People are treating their bodies as commodities they can trade for sexual experiences. It's not a good scene. Derek Noble has seen people reach the pinnacle of success and still struggle with their self-image and their obsession with perfection. 
He advises a more practical, personal goal. When you look in the mirror and you take your shirt off, do you like what you see? But he laughs, admitting even the guys who have the hottest bodies sometimes don't like what they see. So there's all sorts of uh, additional costs. For keeping the deluxe body. Hair coloring from House of Lords, $720 a year. Tanning from Club 10, $600. Waxing, <laughs> underarm, full legs, chest back, bikini. Tooth whitener, it costs about $200. Cologne, Jean-Paul Gaultier uh, from the Bay, $85. So that's the annual cost of extras for a deluxe perfect body, which is gonna run you about $4,000. Annual cost of extras for an ultimate perfect body. Elizabeth Milan, Hotel Spa, the Royal York Hotel, eyebrow style, $180. Eyebrow tinting, $216. Eyelash tinting, $276. Manicure, pedicure, basic European facial, chocolate body treatment, men's back facial, hair coloring from Daniel Bevan Salon and Holt Renfrew, $2,000. Electrolysis, another $2,000. Uh, ear candling, a personal trainer, five times a week, about $14,000 at Bally's. And that total will be an extra $23,000. I wear a small muscle shirt. Can Danny Crowder read perfection? Danny Crowder of UATV's The Lofters, that reality show like Big Brother, says beautiful bodies are for display purposes and he hopes someday to display his for Playgirl magazine. I think Playgirl magazine doesn't exist anymore either. Right now, this sexy tease is on a quest. He has already trained for a year and a half, but two months ago, Crowder became a disciple of Ian Walling, 1998's Mr. Natural Universe, and is bulking up in preparation for the Natural Universe competition on July 19th and 20th. So Danny Crowder back in the day, getting all buffed up. He's still around and still looks pretty damn good. Ad for the Bay, ad for Polar Ice. A split ad, one part for Five Night Club, which was below epic thickness. And of course, Five Night Club is now the condo. And this is a party launched on June 13th called Juicy with Matt C and DJ Black Hat. And for It's a Boy's Life, can you remember? With DJ Sean Riker, Sylvain Girard, and Matt C. These parties were put on by Steve Arson and Adam Hardy. Ads on display, Statlers, uh, the Brownstones, Statlers and the Brownstone are no longer around. Condom Shack on Young Street, no longer there. Half page ad for Hamilton Pride. Half page ad for St. Mark's Spa. St. Mark's Spa is no longer there as well. It's located on Young Street. Now it is the offices of ACT. <laughs> the AIDS Committee of Toronto. Oh no! An article from Stephen Beresny called Buy from a Dealer You Know. His article is about drugs. Test your batch of party drugs ahead of time, says Chris Lau, an outreach coordinator for the AIDS Committee of Toronto. It's better knowing in advance than knowing Pride Weekend that you got a bad batch of supplies and finding out on the dance floor. ACT has launched a new campaign aimed at queer men in the party drug scene, encouraging them to start thinking about their Pride drug use up to a year in advance. <laughs> Good luck with that. It includes a website, uh, torontovibe.com, with numerous pre-Pride party tips. Do you know you're going to be staying up three nights in a row and only getting two hours sleep? Lau asks. He says the website has practical information on how to get through the Pride Weekend in a safe way and to keep you with a happy face at the end of it. Stephen ends with, Lau stresses that the end of Pride is a good time to assess whether or not the partying went according to plan and to start thinking about how next year could be better. Usually by the end of the weekend, you know if you feel good about yourself or if you feel bad about yourself. And what you've done. Uh, some ads here from uh, York Region Pride and an ad from Gay Hurry Date. I remember going on a Gay Hurry Date um, I wrote an article on Gay Hurry Date, and I remember like maybe years later hosting a Gay Hurry Date, or was it Straight Hurry Date? I don't know. Uh, more ads here, with another ad page, Taking Back the Night at The Barn with Chris Steinbeck. Next page is my feature on the Pride Parties, where I list almost every single Pride Party and what is good about them. You can't go to every single party, can you? With almost as many parties as the number of people who get banned from the barn each week, Pride Weekend, June 28th to 30th, might be the wildest yet, but going to a party that you know little about is like opening a tick tick ticking present. Disaster, darling. Disaster. Below are my picks of the best pride bashes. So get your tickets early. And if none of these socials is your cup of tea, there's always the good old Attitude Street Barn. Free before 1 a.m. Just keep your noses clean. pre pride Eve. What? Five at Five St. Joseph. DJ Mark Falco. Price, $10, capacity $450. Why? For an average sized club, they have an impressive sound system and light show. Mark Falco has been recognized as one of the best DJs in Canada and he has a CD out, SPG's The Circuit Party 6. The Crazy But Sweet Safonda will be performing and Hot Go Go Boys will add eye candy. Fashion tip, body body skin tight tops, tapered casual pants, and gel hair. What? Vaseline Shame Party at Lee's Palace. DJs Will Monroe, Miss Barbara Frisch, price $10, capacity $800. Why? The boys here don't wear lip gloss. This alternative queer punk rock new wave night is for the Queen Street types. The crowd will be mostly local queers. Both floors of least pals will be used. The night includes a performance by the Toilet Boys. Fashion tip, retro shirts, combat boots, lip, nose, and eyebrow piercings. What? Cheeky at Buddies at Buddies and Bad Times Theater. 
Price, $10. Capacity, $650. Why? Great for the ghetto peg who's into 80s music. This space is rarely decorated, but the club, which will overtake the entire theater complex, is always packed with a decadent, artsy crowd that prefers beer over candy. Fashion tip, vintage Vanderbilt jeans and hoodies. Pride Eve, Saturday, June 29th. What? Unity Squirt Party, The Docks, 11 Polson Street, with DJ Cesar and Chris Steinbeck. Why? Cesar is one of the most progressive DJs in Toronto. He doesn't just spin a track. He works it hard, like cheap sweatshop labor. This outdoor water gun party with pool and foam pit is good for picking up AWOL Americans and making weekend friends. The always moist Lena Love will be performing. This is one of seven Unity parties organized by the city's power promoters, Unify Group. Fashion tip, Snoopy Cedos, Water Wings, a sun umbrella, sandals, towel, and a waterproof fanny pack to store your goods. What? Unity, the big one. CME National Trade Center. 10 p.m. till 8 a.m. TJ's Hex Hector and Corey Activate. Price, $70. Capacity, $7,000. <laughs> Why? Organized by Jason Ford and David Dean of Boost Boys, Daniel Bellavance of Five, Fab Publisher Michael Schwartz, and Gilles Belanger, this is one of the largest parties in North America. Last year, they had two motorcycles inside a giant metal mesh globe and the gospel choir. The year before that, they built a rainforest with mist. Last year's party did seem a bit stark in the decor department, but Unity spokesman Jason Ford blames fire marshal restrictions. They have learned from last year. The decor will be two meter meets the lost city of Shangri-La. Performing a series of shows will be the Volcanic Safonda, Lena Love, and over 150 others. If you've not heard Grammy Award winning remixer DJ Hex Hector spin, watch out. This man's style will have you creaming so much you'll be sliding on the dance floor. Tissue please. Fashion tip. Muted greens, browns, gap khakis, safari hats, themes of ancient cultures. What? Proba Group's Trippin' Party at York Event Theatre, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. DJ Alex Lauderstein. Price, $40. Capacity, $1,200. Why? New kid on the Pride Party block, Proba is competing with mega promoters like when the Boost Boys went up the Mammoth Garden Party way back in the day. But competition is good. If Proba's Alexander the Great Party was any indication of the orgy of delight, that awaits us at this event, then it should be worth going back a second. The theme will be futuristic cartoons. Think Jetsons. Performing will be New York duo Leo singing their hit Rapture. With a name like Trippin, things might get a bit messy. Bring a bit. Fashion tip. Bright synthetic materials. Cute anime t-shirts. Space boots. What? Manhattan Club, 19 Balmudo, 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. with DJ Kashmir Ray. Price, $10. Why? If you aren't into circuit music and muscle merry bumping and two-stepping, and your musical tastes include R&B, classic house, reggae, and raga, then this night will be more up your alley. Though the club is small, the vibe is big enough. The theme is Garden of Eden. Fashion tip, loincloths, chunky beads, wild hair, natural fibers only. What? Fly, Ape Gloucester, DJ's Mark Falco and Sean Riker. Price, $10. Capacity 650. Why? Though they are known more for their minimal approach to decor, they always throw major parties. If you've had problems getting into this club before, ensure that you get in lickety split by bringing Patricia and Sonia, the door divas, little gifts to occupy their hands while you sneak past. Fashion tip tank tops, visible tattoos, amber crappie and bitch, cargo pants, with lots of pockets to hold your thirst quenching water. What? Leather Pride Ball at the Opera House, 735 Queen Street East. 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. DJ Phil Bennett. Price $25. Capacity $950. Why? Leather, poppers, and bears. Oh my! If you're really into the leather scene, this party is perfect for you. Put together by the Mitchell Leatherman Toronto organization, they are billing it as the steamiest party on the weekend. Bring a hanky. Fashion tip? Leather. Duh. An extra collar with leash to snag potential tricks. Pride night, Sunday, June 30th. What? Unity's unified celebration at Cool House. 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. DJs Manny Lehman and Chris Steinbeck. Price $45. Capacity $3,500. Why? The government houses the best sound system in the country. The space will be decorated in a Mardi Gras theme and parties will be given bead necklaces. The forming will be Nicole Batista, Jacqueline Chet, and Titi Galore. Fashion tip? Bright colors, Daisy Dukes, midriff tops, and glittery lip gloss. What? It's a boy's life at it, 167 Church Street. DJ Sylvain Gerard, Corey Activate, and Matt C. $20. Capacity, not available. Why? Promoters Adam Party and Steve Arson have a slew of parties under their belts and an attention to detail that will impress. Pressing the vinyl will be local legends. Nikki Harris, Madonna's backup singer, will be showcasing her material. Girl. 
decor will be a combination of Pride Day and Canada Day motifs. Routine! Fashion tip, red and white accents, roots gear, hockey hair. Pride partying tips, what to bring, a friend with opposite tastes and men, the less competition the better. What to wear, most parties are jam packed so don't wear anything too obtrusive. Your Victorian hoop dress is best saved for tricking on Halloween. If you must, you're allowed one rainbow colored item of clothing only, no more. Remember, you're not a walking flagpole. When to do it? Have sex anytime, anywhere. With a portable safe sex kit, including wet gel capsules, available at Priya on Church Street. Where to get the goods? The bomb energy capsules, available at bombenergy.com. They'll keep you going legally and safely all night long. Why stealing is bad. Do not steal dry cleans wigs. They have sharp nails and will attack on mass if one of their owners threatens. How to prepare. Eat well, get lots of rest, take your vitamins, the real ones. Practice your dance moves in front of critical friends. And my regular deep dish column. And this deep dish column is all about my first ever fashion carriage, which I was so happy to attend. Fashion cares report. Where was the fashion amidst this spectacle and did we really care? If fashion is now buff boys and cheap heads, acrobats and whipped cream bisexual orgies, then we will all have to buy new wardrobes. Seeking out the best dress and following a bill of smoke to the only table that was illegally lighting up and using plates as ashtrays, I stumbled into the scrumptious Stephen Sabados and Chris Heidman of the Designer Guys. As we know, Chris Heidman unfortunately passed away a few years ago. A millionaire show wife, Marlene Copeland, Canada's Ivana Trump. Dressed in a sheer white, skin-tight unitard, she sat with her dyed pink poodle, Bunny. Bunny gets bagged once a week. It's all natural and doesn't hurt her, says James Jefferson. Copeland's personal designer. I'm sure Michael Jackson said the same thing, but is it right? Copeland's outfit reeked of so much sexuality that when she entered the room, the scent arrived before her and lingered after she had left. Surprisingly, it was Copeland's first fashion cares. I'm always out of town. I don't really like the auction part of fashion cares. I find it annoying. I like action, not auction. The bantering of the hoedown style auctioneer proved too much this room, and they exited for a party in the limo. Carla Collins, who smiled to see Grace the trash cans across the city, white trash on trash, she says, flew by the smoking table looking simply sexy. Out in the hall, a shirtless and horny Danny Crowder of UATV was on a desperate hunt for someone to juggle his balls, while ex lofter Matthew Chantawa found that the washrooms to be where the real action is. Chantawa is hoping to host what to be the final airing of Soviet TV on June 14th. Also spotted under the big top, ex much music vice president Denise Donlan, ex mayor Barbara Hall, and recently ex ex Mark Hall. A slightly messy Mark, one too many of something, was with boyfriend number two, the clear silk challenge Ray Smith, 19, who couldn't pry his props away from Mark's ass all night. Mark and his recent ex split up before their much publicized calm date, but like a true political couple, they went through the charade for the press. Given old school runway were Romel, Jack A, and Susie Wong in a show that bared ample skin as clothing seemed optional. Then there were the real singers. Angie Stone, who almost missed her stage cue, expressed that doing this event was what I'm supposed to do and where I'm supposed to be right now. I am grateful to be able to give something back. Poor David Usher, wearing silver nail polish, was upstage during his number by half doing acrobat Adonis doing tricks with hanging bed sheets. At the press conference backstage, Mac addict Amanda Marshall stressed that Mac Cosmetics is to be commended for this event, particularly at a time when we all need to celebrate. And celebrate they did as the after party complete with funhouse mirrors that made everyone think that they were on Cap Chow was packed. DJ Abel spun hard. Kevin Aviance had a spectacular outfit. He cares about fashion. And on to the photos. They were shot by Stefan Gergar and Mitchell Rayfall. Queen of Fashion Cares, Jack A. Sorry, Safanda. David Usher, Andy Stone, Amanda Marshall. Not to be confused with Shirley Manson, Sir Elton John, and Mary J. Sony Perez and Peck and Stretcher, Denise Donlan. Marlene Copeland, designer guy, Chris Heidman, Marlene's designer, and Bunny. The end of Fashion Cares. Top notch lobby entertainment. The University of Waterloo cheerleaders. Really? Okay. His big ball of break. Damn this sheep head. No heels in hair and makeup area. A clown. Philip Ng, the Fashion Cares mastermind. Kevin Aviance at the Fashion Cares after party. Mark Hall and Ray Smith. Why weren't you my prom date? Dessert above and right. The show, acrobats, and Five's Chris, a real sexy kitten. And uh, Chris used to work at Five Nightclub, now living in Montreal. Next page, some more ads, gay games, a car ad that reads like a personal ad. Hot, take your top off at Least Depot. If anyone knows Brandon D. Urquhart, you may want to ask him, what's up with your ad, buddy? 
next page is our remix column by our music editor, Ilio Yanachi. The Bell will liberate your soul. Whitney Houston, a confusing mess. Cindy Lauper gets eight plus. Frankie says, respect. Uncertain times call for uncertain divas. There was an era when the word diva brought to mind creme de la creme musical empires reigned by such greats as Aretha Franklin, Deborah Harry, and Annie Lennox, who just won Billboard's coveted Century Award. The people behind VH1's Diva Las Vegas special, airing Sunday, June 9th, on Much More Music, have done the unthinkable. They got the Dixie Chicks Countryland Cowgirls, looking like fired actors from Dukes of Hazard, to hop on the same mighty list. To help out those wisecrackers at VH1, Remix has whipped up a report card to rate the standout and worn out performances of the MGM Grand Stage on the upcoming special. So Elio saw this concert, and he's giving his ratings on it. Celine Dion, F, who invited her? She hawked her new single, A New Day Has Come, a song geared towards the retirement crowd. Enya must be furious. Anastasia, B+. Plus. She topped Celine with her thunder and blasted out her cover of ACDC's Shook Me All Night Long to open the show. Cher, C. She came in with a tattered believe, and at least her outfits got better later on. Cindy Lauper, A+. Plus. She did an astounding turn-back time duet with Cher. Mary J. Blige and Whitney Houston, C. Their duet of Rainy Days fell apart. Whitney sang for about one minute and was a confusing mess. But Mary's solo, No More Drama, gets an A+. Plus. Stevie Nicks and the Dixie Chicks. A. Strong, but very undiva. They sang Fleetwood Max, Landslide, without breaking a note. And then he goes on to talk about uh, Frankie Knuckles and David Morales and their party at the government. He ends this section with co-headliner Morales, a DJ notorious for asking artists such as Mariah Carey and Aretha Franklin to re-record vocals for his remixes, sees spinning as a sexual and cathartic experience, playing house like making love to an audience. That means foreplay, climax, and post-foreplay. You go up and down, work yourself out, and bust another nut. It also means liberating yourself with the right partners. Patty the Bell and Shaka Khan will liberate your soul. Britney Spears, she ain't lifting the stress off your shoulders. Uh, he also talks to Taylor Dane, backtracking with Taylor Dane. She was DJ Tony Moran's first choice for singing the anthem of anthems in the film Circuit. Remix touches base with the Great Dane. <laughs> great Dane, Great Dane. Did you see Circuit? Don't ask me about it. I'm just a straight girl for two children living in California. The film definitely represents a darker side of the circuit, but it has some optimism in it. What have you learned from working with the gay community? That it isn't gay versus straight. Last week I sang Love Will Lead You to 50,000 People for California's Gay Pride and dedicated to Kevin O'Coin. Kevin O'Coin, uh, we mentioned in the last episode of Good Fat Friday, it was a famous makeup artist to the stars who died on you know, May 7th, a month earlier. Kevin O'Coin, he was a slugger and never held back. When can we expect a new album? It's about putting dollars, politics, and my voice on something worthy. When you stand around long enough, you get to sit down. Now, the ad for the VH1 special Diva Las Vegas, so much more music, and for Hair of the Dog. The Hair of the Dog is owned by Michael Schwartz and Kier McRae. And of course, they also, at that time, owned Fab Magazine as well. Another ad page, and our twink column with Alex Rolson. Twinks read, I swear. Remember when you were shoved into a locker for being a book geek? Well, it's time to reclaim your past. Beside tanning, boat cruises, and general overindulgence, summer is the perfect time for reading. And yes, twins do pick up novels, not only so that we have something to hide behind while scoping out some totally hot dude, but more importantly, so that we have something to talk about once you finally get the balls to say hi to him. So here's my list of four perfect summer books to buy if you're still too young to pick up a playgirl. Summer Share is the brand new collection of short stories from Chris Henry, William J. Mann, Andy Schell, and Ben Tyler. If you don't already know, these guys are crowned queens of gay romance novels. The collection covers topics as diverse and important as E or K for the tea dance night and can avoid really fun love in a gay vacation resort town. If you've turned bitter on the whole love thing, then Jean Taylor Roy's second novel, The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things, might be more of your alley. This book just came out in paperback in Canada, although it was issued a while back. In a collection of short stories told from the point of view of a very young, transgender, crystal-addicted kinder whore, the reader is introduced to a land of truck stop, lot of lizards, Christian fundamentalists, and coal-eating psychos. Okay. In James Robert Baker's recently published swan song, Anarchy, he cast himself as a modern-day gay vigilante. That he wrote the novel shortly before killing himself says a lot. But despite all the doom and gloom, you can't help but laugh along with him as he kills neo-Nazi furniture tycoons in Berlin, dodges blowjobs from the Christian coalition, and winds up taking on God while trapped in the body of a Pamela Anderson clone. And finally, although someone in their 30s gasp, might remember these books from the first time around, Dangerous Angels, the Witsy Bat books by Francesco Leo Block is a must-have summer read for any respectable twink. Originally five books, they have been issued as one set, and this new treatment lets you fully absorb the message of his neo fairy tale. Wetsy isn't like other high school girls. She wears her hair short and bleeps white. Instead of having a crush on the football player, she has a crush on Dirk, the fag punk with a passion for James Mansfield. 
This is another ant page. And next is our troll column by Paul Bellini. It doesn't involve wheat grass. I finally found something in Toronto's gay village. It doesn't involve drag, strippers, bingo, brunch, gay TV, poppers from Quebec, hustlers from Quebec, little blue pills, blue haired activists. I think that was a jab at uh, Mark Hall. Uh, we've been talking about him for the last three episodes, the last three issues of Fat Magazine. He was a gay Catholic school student who wanted to take his boyfriend to the prom. Was he an activist or just a drama queen media whore? Hmm. Blue haired activists going out of business sales or wheatgrass. Extreme dating makes it easy for even the least charismatic of gay men to connect. It's the darn nicest thing that's happened in Gayville in a long time. Gayville, also Gayville. Invented by a rabbi, was it a yenta? Extreme dating is a sort of game in which participants rotate and engage in a series of eight minute conversations. Not too long if the chemistry is excruciating, but not too short to feel some real excitement. Afterwards, the participants can check a yes or a no box to indicate whether or not they wish to exchange contact info. If both check yes, magic ensues. The whole evening was hosted by the staff of Timothy's at Church in Alexander. I know it must seem like I work for them as I mention the place in almost every column, but they never make the mistake of employing a bitch like me. By the way, there's also a picture of Kristen Wong Tam here because before I Kristen Wong Tam was all powerful counselor Kristen Wong Tam, she um, owned that Timothy's on Church Street. And of course, as we all know, that Timothy's has now closed down. Paul goes on to talk more about his uh, speed dating experience in this column. A relationship expert was present to make sure all of us tortoises came out of our shells. And the organizer, Kristen Wong Tam, mentioned future events, including theme nights such as celebrity extreme dating, the mind boggles. Of my eight dates, five were Asian and three were white. Yeah, black people don't have time for things like this. And he ends with, conventional wisdom suggests that only those who are pathetically shy or unlucky in love would need something like extreme dating. But pathos was the farthest thing from anyone's mind at night. Everyone seemed genuinely happy, which is more than I can say if you're average gay bar crowd. Ad page. That's a party at Lola. Remember Lola? Lola was on Alexander Street, I believe it was. Across from Buddies and Bad Times Theater. It was really um, deceptive. You walk into this small square or box where there's just one bar and like a couple tables. Uh, and then you walk down these steps and there's like this massively long uh, club happening and it was really good for a while. Paul Smart read that. Next page is a trade column by Todd Clink. Reaching deep for the bees. When I read this headline the first time when this came out, I was like, oh my God. Five years ago, as a newbie hustler, I got a call. I'm called to North York, $200 to cover travel and fees. Nothing strange requested. I grabbed a cab and headed to the location. A group of dingy three-story Ontario housing project buildings. A bit unusual, but hey, people in the projects need love and too. I buzz, no reply. I buzz again, cursing. I just wasted $20 on a cab, fuck. I started to walk away and then a crackle on the intercom. Hello, come on up. I started getting nervous, visiting a room full of crack smokers waiting to attack me. But the guy's voice sounded normal, so maybe he was just in the can when I buzzed. Up three flights of stairs, I knocked on the door. No response. I heard a thunderous thump from the inside. I knocked again. A few more thumps with pauses. I felt the floor shaking. The lock rattled, the door opened, and before me stood Ron. Wow. His belly hung far over the front of his pants, and gravity had helped create an extension of his belly which hung even lower. It could only be described as looking like a giant tongue. Are you still gonna come in? I'll understand if you don't. That's why I'm not wearing a shirt. A lot of guys just leave when they see me. I tried not to feel sorry for him, but after hearing that, I couldn't help it. I entered the apartment. So Todd goes on to talk about this experience with this very large, very large man. Ron, it turned out, was on disability. He had a normal body and was actually not bad looking until he was about 28. He was a 24 seven alcoholic from the age of 18 to 28. When he quit drinking, his weight ballooned up to 500 pound range in a short period of time. He's basically been a shut-in ever since. I saved up for three months to be able to afford you. Why don't you take your shirt off? I want to get my money's worth, he said. I obliged and we sat and chatted for a bit in his living room. He pulled out a Polaroid camera and asked to take a few shots of me. I told him, only if I could take a few of you. I posed nude in his kitchen with a broom, bending over into the freezer. As if you're reaching deep for the peas. And sitting in his armchair. He proceeded to the bedroom. He proudly demonstrated how he could control his motorized single person hospital bed with a remote control. The sex was a public service, involving a lot of positioning, straining, stretching, and adjusting of the bed. My finger, his ass, in some very specific directions. Rotated, rotated clockwise. Rotated clockwise, no. Now counterclockwise, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Now clockwise, yeah, stroke it, yeah. I pulled my shoulder muscle trying to reach for his hole. <laughs> After it was over, I was fucked up for three days, emotionally drained and numb. I realized that his relations with hustlers was his only pleasure. I felt good about it. I'm glad I took the Polaroids. Next page is the address box S and men for men. Next page is our playing safe column by James Murray. 
on and off condoms. At the recent Canadian Association for HIV Research Conference, the Polaris study presented information which showed that some gay men delay the use of condoms and that this delayed application is putting men at risk for HIV infection. The Polaris study is run out of the HIV Studies Unit at the University of Toronto. They interviewed gay men who have recently acquired HIV to try and understand what factors put those men at risk. Some of the men in the study delay their application of condoms. This means they begin anal sex without a condom and then stop partway through, put on a condom, then continue fucking until they come into the condom. This may be one way that some gay men try to get pleasure of unprotected anal sex while still reducing their risk for HIV. Wear a condom. All the while. Next page is our Mish Things, where we give products to local queer celebrities for them to test. Smooth as Jiffy peanut butter without the nuts. What's a boy to do when trying to find the perfect shaving cream for his chest and ass? I usually use Life Brand, says Northbound Leather salesperson and drag queen Casta Spell. Fab asked Miss Spell to test two shaving products just as she was getting ready for the Miss Zippers competition last week. Vichy Shaving Foam claims to help those who suffer from micro imperfections caused by bacteria, ingrown hairs, and skin problems, while Biotherm Om Shaving Gel claims to repair irritations caused by shaving. This ends with, Miss Spell was disappointed by Biotherm Om Shaving Gel. It's really citrusy, she said, smelling the dispenser of the bottle. It's also really creamy, but it slips off your hands when wet. Miss Spell concludes that Vichy can be a lot of fun because it's foamy and has a dispenser that looks like a satellite. She found Biotherm Bland. I wouldn't use it in the bedroom. Wouldn't be good for shaving play. That was written by James Sharani. And for Zipper Cell Block. Oh, let's see what the queens we have here. We have Felicia. Felicia is no longer with us. Michelle Ross is no longer with us. Uh, Jackie Baker. Mm. Amanda Roberts. Still out there doing her stuff. There's a DJ Ellen we still have around. DJ Blackhead, of course. Still doing his thing. G True. In the piano lounge, we have G Young. Miss Goodwill, Brad Alexander, and Mr. Greg Beer. Add for Pride Ottawa, our listings page, what to do, where to go, picture of David Morales there, Toronto community, listings, some Ottawa and Ontario listings on the next page. Chelsea Boys by Hanson and Newworth. This was Sky meeting up with his long lost brother. Sky is very earthy gay and, and his brother was very hardcore partier. So they met up after many years apart and were planning on rekindling their relationship as brothers. This was the last panel of this comic, but I have a feeling it's not going to go well because I have a feeling that Sky's brother is just a just a little bit sketch. Then He Ain't Heavy, which is a, yeah, this is an interesting one. They were at a circuit party, I believe. The Fab City Map. Fab City Map. The Fab Business Directory. Another page. And Stefan Gregor's Fab Boy was Drew, this 22-year-old Balaji model and professional t-shirt holder, hails from Hamilton, Ontario. His music of choice includes hip-hop, house, and pop. Drew enjoys dancing at Hamilton's Embassy Club on Saturday. When it comes to men, the six-foot-one hunk likes funky, stylish types in their 20s who are in control of their lives and have nice teeth. Unfortunately, I couldn't track down Drew. If anyone knows him, let me know. More classifieds. And once again, a classy ad from Zelda's. And the last page is the Unity 2002 party ad with Hex Hector put on by the Unified Group. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Good Fat Friday. And to see past episodes of Good Fat Friday, join my YouTube channel at Ra Ra Roller. I'm your host, Roland Chambers. We'll see you next week. Have yourself a Good Fat Friday.